Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it will be my pleasure to be with you tonight on this uh, virtual tour uh, to Egypt. Uh, in about 45 minutes, I will try to give you an idea about uh, how the trip uh, in Egypt uh, is like. Uh, first of all, please allow me to introduce myself. Uh, my name is uh, Dodi. I live in Cairo. Uh, I was born here, bred and bothered, and lived all my life here. Uh, I've been guiding the tours of the travel departments in Egypt uh, since uh, 2000 and Egypt, uh, and seven, sorry, since 2007. And uh, I have my license as a tour guide here in Egypt since 1998. I've been guiding tours all around Egypt, but I'm not very old. Uh, in the next uh, 45 minutes, uh, I will try uh, to give you uh, the flavor of uh, how is a trip uh, like uh, here uh, in Egypt. I have some uh, pictures and some uh, videos I hope you will enjoy with me in the next uh, uh, few minutes. So we'll try to talk about uh, the trip to Egypt uh, like step by step. It's about uh, 13 days. Uh, so we'll start from day one until the final day, which will be uh, the, uh, the departure. Of course, uh, in day uh, in day one, of course, you travel. You arrive uh, Egypt. Ana Misharif, shagal in the slides. Okay, you uh, you fly to uh, to Egypt the first day. You arrive Cairo International Airport. You are met and assisted by the representative of uh, the travel uh, department in uh, Cairo, holding the sign or the flag at the airport. He gets you through the airport smoothly and walk you to uh, the bus or the coach of uh, the travel department and a smooth transfer to the hotel to start your check-in and hand you the keys of uh, the rooms. Uh, you stay the first night there in the hotel in Cairo, and then uh, the next morning I get uh, to meet you to start our adventure. Uh, first of all, let's talk about, uh, well, geography, Egypt. Where is Egypt? Well, Egypt is uh, located at uh, the northeast of the continent of Africa. We can see we have the Mediterranean Sea at uh, uh, the north. Uh, north from Egypt, so we have we have Europe, we have like, uh, we have Cyprus first, we have Greece and we have Turkey, of course. So it's near to you, it's not very far. On uh, the Eastern uh, side of Egypt, we have some neighboring countries like Saudi Arabia, like uh, Jordan, also Jerusalem is not far uh, from us. Uh, the whole size of uh, Egypt is uh, 1 million square kilometers. What does this mean? One million square kilometers. This means that this size, this surface area, or this country is bigger in size than any country in Europe, except uh, Russia. Uh, if we talk about the population, uh, well, according to the very last statistic, uh, it's uh, 100 million and two. Most of Egypt, unfortunately, is a desert. We only have one main green area, which is around the valley of the River Nile, which runs in the middle of uh, the map uh, of Egypt, around which uh, most of the population, more than 90% of the population are, uh, are living. Uh, the capital is, of course, uh, Cairo, about one fifth of the population living in Cairo, 20 million inhabitants, which makes it one of the busiest cities in the world and makes Egypt with over 100 million inhabitants. It makes Egypt as, well, the 10 most populated countries in, uh, in the world. Uh, so this is just an idea about uh, the map, about the location of uh, Egypt. Uh, so most of the monuments, most of the sites uh, we are going to visit are just concentrated around the valley of the Nile in the middle of uh, the map of Egypt. Uh, well, this civilization started thousands of years ago. We'll talk a lot about history since you are in Egypt. Well, if you are interested in monuments and in history, so Egypt is the place for that. One of the most ancient civilization in the world, if not the most ancient at all. It started when the Egyptian discovered the agriculture, 6,000 BC. 8,000 years ago, the Egyptian discovered the agriculture around the valley of the Nile and started the empire. 
starting what we call the time of the pharaohs, the ancient Egyptian kings were called uh, the pharaohs. Uh, and the very first morning, we drive uh, to the city center of Cairo, drive through the streets of Cairo to reach uh, the Egyptian museum. Uh, it's a good way to start the tour by visiting this uh, museum uh, to have a background, a good basic idea about the whole Egyptian history, which will help us to understand next the sites we are going to visit, to know, for example, uh, to which part of the history this monument or this pyramid belong in the history, uh, back in the history. Uh, the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, it has become a world heritage itself. It's a building from the 19th century consisting of two floors with about quarter million pieces. Uh, usually we have a tour in the museum for about uh, two hours. I tried to show you the highlights or the masterpieces, of course, not the, the repeated items in uh, the museum. After the museum, uh, we moved to a lovely restaurant uh, with a lovely view on the River Nile to have our lunch, a break for an hour or two before we drive through the streets of Cairo again. So the first day is like uh, a city tour in Cairo city to see this uh, uh, busy city until uh, we reach uh, one of the most ancient parts of uh, the city, which is uh, the bazaar, which is called the Khan El Khalili Bazaar, one of the most ancient spots that you can walk in Cairo city from 1382. This uh, bazaar was uh, started. So it will be a chance to walk on your own. I give you free time there. You don't have to worry about, for example, language barrier, for example. Well, the spoken language in Egypt is Arabic, but most of the Egyptian, they have a good idea about English since uh, almost all Egyptian, they get uh, the basics or the English grammar as a foreign language in uh, the school, especially in the secondary school. So people are so much familiar to listen to English, especially uh, from the films, you know, and the Hollywood, you know, which is not dubbed, you know, just subtitle, you know. So Egyptians, can help you, anybody can help you on the road, for example. So don't worry about the language barrier at all. In the market, well, uh, you have the choice if you want to walk around or if you just want to sit and relax in one of the cafes, enjoy your coffee, enjoy your tea and watch the world uh, goes by. So uh, in the next slide, I have uh, about a three minute video. Uh, it's a sneaky peek from uh, the market. How are the streets uh, like? Uh, I'll be talking in this video, but well, you're not supposed to be able to hear me in this uh, video as it's uh, just uh, to show you how is it like to walk uh, around. So don't worry about if you cannot hear me properly because it will be noisy around. Here is the video, let's uh, start. Uh, spots in Cairo city, it's uh, the market area, Khan Khalili area, that uh, get to have a walk uh, in the afternoon in the first uh, day. Enjoy the walk, the hustle and bustle. <laughs> Some of the old architecture here from the 14th century as well. From the original market was started in 1382. So on the road when you feel uh, thirsty, you can stop for having Sobia. Sobia. Well, I don't know if there is an equivalent in English, but it's, uh, it's made of rice. So this rice is uh, sweet. And 
it is very good in the heat when it's when it's cold and it's very clean. Take away meal in the middle of the market, some sandwiches, very local. So, this is liver. Liver, you, you'll get the chance to, uh, to taste that in one of the nights on the cruise ship on the Nile. It's very tasty. So, that's the, uh, the liver here. Well, it's, it's cow liver, not, nothing else. It's the only way to do the delivery here. Well, this is a kind of uh, sausages. And this is another sausages. This is local sausages. It looks like sausages. All made of beef. Here. So this is a pickle. The pickle here, there's some uh, potatoes. It's pickled as well. There's carrots. And then some cucumbers. Okay, so this was our first uh, video. I hope it gave you some flavor, you know, of the area. Uh, Okay, well, uh, after we leave uh, the market, uh, we start to drive back to the uh, hotel. At that night, uh, we, uh, we have the opportunity, you know, for an optional excursion, you know, uh, to see the Pyramids Plateau at nighttime, uh, which is an interesting show. It's the sound and light show. It's about an hour show after the, uh, the sunset. Uh, it's an optional excursion. Well, it would be um, interesting, you know, to see or to be in this uh, majestic uh, site at nighttime while uh, hearing some magnificent voices of some narrators, you know, some voices, you know, like uh, some old voices, you know, like the famous Egyptian actor, Omar Sharif, you know, and some famous uh, celebrities like Richard Burton, you know, from Hollywood, for example. Uh, then the next morning, uh, we proceed to see the landmark of Egypt. We have a very special day. We dedicated just one day, almost one full day, to visit the, this site, which is, of course, the highlight of the itinerary. It's the site of the Plateau of Giza. Uh, as you see in the picture, they are in the city. Well, many people get surprised, you know, when they find the, uh, the pyramids in the city. They could be almost from four sites surrounded by uh, the city. It's unlike what you see in the photos, you know, when they are remote in the desert, you know. They are actually in uh, the city. We take our time in touring around the, the plateau of uh, uh, the pyramids in that day, and we hear all the stories, you know, and all the information I give you then, you know, about the, um, there about, uh, for example, well, the function of the pyramid, what's the purpose of the pyramid, you know, um, how they were built, all the theories we have about how they were built, the size of the blocks, the numbers of the blocks, you know, uh, uh, what kind of material they use, you know, at that time, what kind of things, you know, mean of transport, you know, they use to transport the blocks, you know, uh, all uh, the information. So we visit this uh, plateau uh, of the pyramids and the surrounding area, like, for example, the Sphinx area, a very small statue, the Sphinx. Well, of course, I'm joking. Well, it's uh, the biggest Sphinx, or sorry, it's the biggest statue. We have here in Egypt, well, this statue is 25 meters height. Uh, well, in the next slide, well, I have a short video. This will be just one minute, you know, it's a sneaky peek, you know, to the Sphinx area. I will take you to the nearest spot uh, to the Sphinx. So another landmark of Egypt, the famous uh, Sphinx statue. This is the nearest you can get uh, to that uh, statue. It's the biggest statue in Egypt, 25 meters of height from the bottom to the top of the hill and 57 meters from the front, from the pole to the tail at uh, the back. And again, it represents King Kefren, the builder of the second uh, pyramid, which stands over there just uh, behind. So how are these... Uh, Pyramids built 4,600 years ago. We have some theories, you know, like two or three theories. We talk about it. Some of the writers of some of the historians, like Herodotus, the Greek historian who visited Egypt in the fifth century BC. We talk about all of that uh, 
on the tour. Thank you. <laughs> okay, this uh, was a short video from the Sphinx uh, site. Uh, well, I have another video, the next uh, one. It will be another minute, just one minute. It will give us an overview of the whole plateau. How is it like to drive through the pyramids uh, plateau? Um, it's, a, it's a huge area. It's about nine square kilometers in, uh, in size. So we'll always be using a mean of transport, which will be the bus, uh, of course, to tour around. So in this short of uh, one minute, so it will give you kind of, uh, well, the feeling, you know, how to be there, how to be driving around here and uh, there, you know, and it's, uh, uh, it's a musical video. I hope you will enjoy. Okay, after this wonderful tour and this wonderful day, uh, we'll uh, drive uh, back uh, to the hotel in Giza to collect our luggage and to start a new phase of uh, uh, the trip. We'll uh, proceed to uh, Cairo International Airport to take our flight uh, to the south. As we see in the map, you know, the red star here at the north is Cairo and uh, we'll be flying to Luxor. It's only one hour uh, flight, very short flight. One hour could be less than one hour, could be like 50 minutes. The distance is about 700 kilometers uh, where we reach uh, Luxor uh, that uh, uh, night. We arrive in Luxor at uh, night time, and then uh, another bus of the travel department will be waiting for us at the other side. And uh, it will take us uh, to uh, the dock where we'll start our boarding on the cruise ship, which is a different part or a different phase of uh, uh, the holiday. We'll be boarding for, uh, we'll be starting seven nights accommodation uh, on a full board uh, uh, basis. We just, we walk in the boat, we proceed to the lounge bar and we start the check-in and uh, we get the key cards of uh, our cabins and then uh, we just relax and let the wonderful staff of the boat look uh, um, we get our dinner in that night, you know, and then the next morning we start the sightseeing of uh, Luxor. Uh, the very first sightseeing, which in an early start in the morning, is the site of uh, the West Bank of Luxor. Well, Luxor has like basically two parts, the Western Bank site and the Eastern Bank site. So the first night or after the first night, we get the chance to visit uh, in the Western Bank, uh, the Valley of uh, the Kings. The Valley of the Kings is simply is a valley where the kings of ancient Egypt uh, had uh, their tombs. We are talking about more than 3,000 years ago. Could be. Some tombs are 3,500 years old. Uh, a lot of them, they still retain the original colors and uh, the reliefs untouched. You know, it's, it would be very interesting, you know, because this, these reliefs may give us an idea about how did the, the ancient Egyptian think. How did those people think 3,000 years ago, you know? What was the mind of the mankind at that time, you know, like all these reliefs are not just, will just give us an idea about uh, all of that. We have 62 tombs in the Valley of the Kings, full of colors, full of reliefs. Like here, this is a different relief from one of the tombs here. Of course, one of the most famous tombs here, there is the tomb number 62 perhaps the latest discovery in the Valley of the Kings, tomb of King Tutankhamun, this golden pharaoh uh, who died at the age of 19, but he became a celebrity because of his tomb, because it was the only tomb to be discovered in touch, in touch. Uh, the year 1922, it was discovered in, force, in the force of November 19, 
2022. So within two days from now, um, there will be big celebrations in the Luxor celebrating uh, the passing of 99 years of the discovery of the tomb of King Tutankhamun. You'll get the opportunity if you'd like to walk in uh, this uh, tomb uh, to see his mummy. Of course, all the treasures already moved to the Egyptian museum. We get to see them when we are in Cairo in the Egyptian museum. But of course, you have the opportunity when you are in the Valley of the Kings, if you would like uh, uh, to walk in this uh, historical spot of this uh, most famous tomb there in the Valley of the Kings. Uh, so after finishing the visit of the site of the Valley of the Kings, we take the bus towards another. Uh, this is another picture from uh, the same tomb, the tomb of Tutankhamun. You can see the 12 baboons representing 12 hours symbolically. I'll give you more details about that on the tour. I'm not getting much into Egyptology and history here since uh, we have uh, well uh, limited time here on this uh, virtual tour. Well, next we proceed to uh, a very unique temple in the Western Bank, excavated in the cliffs of the mountain. As we can see, you know, we'll get to drive through the Western Bank there. We see the cliffs, you know, the mountains of limestone and also of alabaster. It's a very special stone there, you know, a very special industry for the people there, you know. It looks like marble, you know, but it's much more fragile than uh, marble. And the cliffs here, and you can see this unique temple, the temple of an ancient Egyptian queen who ruled Egypt in the 16th century before Christ for 20 years. She ruled Egypt, the temple of Queen Hatshepsut. Why is it unique? It's unique because it's excavated in the mountain and it's consisting of like three terraces. And you can get to these uh, terraces by the ramps we can see here. Well, this is of course your wonderful guide with the flag of the travel department here. That's another view of uh, the, uh, this is from the second terrace here of uh, this uh, uh, temple, the temple of Queen Hatshepsut. So it's a morning uh, trip. Uh, and then we return back uh, to the boat by lunchtime, well, before one o'clock where we have our lunch. And then we start our sailing, our first sailing of uh, uh, the boat. Uh, we just, uh, well, after we have the lunch, if you would like, you can just go and relax in the upper deck of the boat just and enjoy the scenery around the Nile. You know, the greenery, the vegetation and the desert, an amazing contrast you will see there until that you can even, you can put one leg in the greenery and the other leg in the, uh, in the desert, you know, an amazing contrast there because the River Nile is the only source of water we have here in Egypt. So it depends how far can the water reach, you know, then when it can't reach, it's a desert. Uh, while we are sailing, well, uh, the first village we pass by will be uh, Esna. I have here, I have a video. It's, uh, it's just a, a one minute uh, video, a quick video, just uh, before we get to see the next uh, village. Uh, it's about uh, the cruise ship. just a sneaky peek, a quick one, you know. Okay, uh, so uh, wh while we are sailing first, you know, we passed by a village called Esna. In this uh, village, you know, in the River Nile here, we have a lock. 
you know, it will uh, be interesting to see the lock system there. Well, I'm sure, well, you have in your country, you have some lock system in, um, in some of the, on some of your rivers, you know, but it will be interesting to see something different here. Uh, because the level of the water here is like, the, it, it differs by about uh, four meters. So they allow two ships at a time to enter the lock, which you can see it on uh, the left side here. They close the gates, you know, and the whole procedure takes about uh, 20 minutes. And then you open the gate and then uh, after you are lift up, you know, because we are going up the river, lift up by four meters and then uh, you pass through to continue the sailing. The lock. So we'll be seeing that in uh, the afternoon, you know, when we are having the afternoon tea around four o'clock or half four. So this is another uh, map, you know, so we'll be reaching, we can see at the top here, Edfu. Edfu is a village where we'll be docking at night and in the morning we'll be visiting the temple. Here we have uh, the temple. Uh, this temple in Edfu uh, village uh, is one of the most well-preserved temples you can visit in Egypt. Uh, the interesting thing about this temple that it's almost complete. It's in a very good condition, which will give us an idea about how did the ancient Egyptian temple look like. What helped in keeping this temple in a very good condition was the sand, that it was totally covered by sand until 1860. In 1860, when a French Egyptologist called Mariette released it from the sand and excavated the area. Fortunately, it's almost complete to give us an idea how did the ancient Egyptian temple look like. This temple was built in 237 BC. The facade we can see in front of us, uh, just to understand exactly how big is that, this is 48 meters of height. So imagine you are standing next to it, how high it will be like. The temple of Horus, the falcon dot. Uh, these are some pics from uh, inside the temple, the corridors inside the temple, where you can see again your wonderful guide with the flag of the travel department. Uh, next, uh, we sail for about five hours until we reach the next uh, temple. Uh, we dock again after five hours, uh, and that day, by the afternoon, about half four, you know, while you are having your tea and cake, you know, in the upper deck, you know, you can see this temple from uh, the harbor, or you can see it from uh, the boat, you know. So, well, some people they just prepare you know, this idea, okay, well, just relax on the boat, you know. Of course, it's your holiday, it's your choice, you know, if you want to walk in. But sometimes people ask me, is it worth it, Dodi? I say, of course, everything is worth it. You are here, well, once or twice, you know, so do and see everything. But of course, it's your choice at the end, you know, if you want to relax, just to relax, you know, this is your holiday. If you want to walk, you know, it's only four minutes walk from the ship, you know, to visit the, this uh, temple, Kumombo temple. Another interesting temple. Uh, here we can see this temple is another different temple of being dedicated for two gods. So we may notice it has like a double facade, it has a double entrance for the double worship which took place here. What worship? The worship of two gods. On the right side we will see a crocodile and a falcon. On the left side you will see a falcon and another falcon. So Basically, the two gods in the middle, the crocodile god called Sobek on the right side, and the falcon god called Horus. So the people, and this uh, was about, uh, well, 400 BC, they were about to make a temple for the falcon. They got one of the most popular gods in ancient Egypt, the god of victory and triumph. But the fear from the crocodile, you know, threatening the people in, in this spot of the Nile, you know, force the people for the worship of this uh, creature. So they had to dedicate half of this temple for the offerings to this uh, God to avoid its problem and its uh, fear. The temple of Komobo for the two gods. Um, uh, that's a pic from uh, the temple inside, you know, was a group, you know, this temple could be, could get busy, you know, sometimes, you know. I have in the next slide, I have uh, another short video, you know, just one minute for, I'm, uh, I'm talking to the group, you know, this was one of the previous tours, you know, uh, about one of the walls, one of the scenes on the, the walls. I hope you will enjoy. Closer, please, Paul. See the scene here. Uh, this is a relief for the God, Imhotep. 
The God of Medicine, it's unfinished unfortunately, is uh, receiving a table of offerings by one of the emperors. What kind of offerings do we have here? Surgical instruments, surgical tools, for example, here the spoons or the scalpel, sponge, scissors, bottles for putting the medicine, pincers, scale for weighing the medicine, knife, some spoons, uh, well, just something you see at the dental clinics now. Yeah. <laughs> well, and what is that here? A toilet? No. <laughs> Two ladies sitting here. Nurses. Nursing chairs. Nursing chairs. There's a nurse uh, chair. If you'd like to take a photo, well, well, nothing much has changed. You know, we still see some uh, very similar tools nowadays. Thousands of years ago, Imhotep used something like that. If you'd like to take a photo. All right. Okay. Uh, so we return, we walk back to the boat after uh, the visit of uh, this temple. And every night at the boat, you know, we have seven nights on the boat, you know, there is entertainment. There is a program, you know, in the lounge uh, uh, bar. Like, uh, for example, we have entertainments to please, well, uh, uh, most of the tests, you know. And, well, uh, we have the Billy Dancing Show. And one night, you know, we have uh, also the, um, the Tanura show the tanura dance tanura it's an arabic word which means the kilt the kilt dance it's something very similar to the whirling the whirling dervishes you know so in the next uh, video well uh, i have just a short it's only three seconds so please pay attention it's only three seconds okay it's very quick you know of this uh, show So this is how is it like? Just to give you an idea. Well, play it again, it's only three seconds. Okay, that's it. Okay. Uh, so an overnight there, and then the next morning we reach Aswan. Most of the, uh, oh, this is another night here, uh, which we call it the, uh, the Galabeya party. What's Galabeya? Galabeya is the Egyptian term for a tunic. You know, it's the outfit of, uh, most of the people in the countryside and people in Upper Egypt, in the south of Egypt, where we are in Luxor and in Aswan as well. And this uh, fancy dress party, well, it's expected from uh, all the guests, you know, to be uh, dressed up uh, like uh, that. Don't, you don't worry, you know, you'll be disguising, nobody would recognize you, you know. And it's very easy, you know, to find them, you know, or to buy them, you know, in many places, you know, uh, like on the boats and uh, in the markets and the uh, in the shops in the surrounding area around the harbor, you know, it's, and it's inexpensive. Is it useful, Dodi? After that, will we throw it away? You know, no, you can keep it for the next year Halloween, the Galabeya party. So everybody's dressed up and happy, as you see in the photo here. Uh, so then we arrived the southernmost city of Egypt, which is uh, Aswan. Aswan, well, where you can see the most, one of the most beautiful spots of the River Nile in, uh, in Egypt because of the nature there, uh, the formation of the rocks, you know, of granite in the water, you know, uh, the nature, uh, the natural life, the wildlife, you know, like the birds, for example, around the, the River Nile. Uh, we so as we see here in the map again, we can see Aswan. It's the southernmost city of Egypt. It's gateway to Africa as well. So you will notice two things there. You will notice that there is a little bit of difference in the climate. The temperature is a, a little bit higher because we are getting closer to the equator. And the second thing also, well, the, uh, the physical aspect of the people, it's getting different, you know. Uh, like, uh, for example, because it's it's a big country, you know, so the links from north to south is about, so it starts in the Mediterranean and it ends in the middle of Africa, you know, after about uh, 1500 kilometers, you know. So people at the north, you know, they have different features from people in the south. The people in the north, they look like Mediterranean, you know, like surrounding neighboring countries like Greece, you know, Cyprus. While if you go further to the south, you know, people get more like the features of Africa. This is what we will notice in uh, Aswan. And that's when we get to visit the sites, you know, like, for example, the modern project of uh, the High Dam, which was built back in the 1960s, and it changed the aspects of life 
in Egypt in many ways, if we talk about the agriculture, for example, uh, it tripled the cultivated area in Egypt and increased the production of some of the products, for example, like the, uh, uh, the crop, uh, the cotton, for example, which uh, is one of the main sources of income for the country. Well, the Egyptian cotton, which is worldwide famous. The dam. The dam also, this dam would be interesting, you know, for especially for the engineer because it's built with a, a different technique. It's not a concrete dam, for example, like the Hoover Dam in the States, but it's it's built by granite. It's like a pyramid made of uh, granite to stop uh, the danger of the flood of the River Nile and to, uh, to, to produce electricity as well. Well, next uh, we drive to uh, a very picturesque temple, picturesque, um, a beautiful temple because it's built over an island in the middle of the water. Uh, it's the temple of uh, Philae. Philae, it's an ancient Egyptian word, which means uh, the pearl. It was called like that because of its uh, beauty and the beautiful trees which grow around uh, the island there. And this uh, temple was dedicated for the goddess of love the goddess Isis, the wife of Osiris in ancient Egypt, built 664 BC. A very unique and beautiful temple. Take nice, lovely photos there, or you can sit in the cafeteria of, uh, the, uh, of this uh, temple, you know, by the river, you know, and just enjoy a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. Um, since we are in, uh, in, in Aswan, so we talk a lot about the Nubians there, which they form about half of the population of Aswan, about 500,000 people. They are Nubians living in Aswan. It's um, a very uh, special race, you know, they are, they are Egyptian, of course, but they have their own tradition, their own culture. They don't intermarry or they don't intermix with non-Nubians, for example, and they even have their own language. This is something you will notice, maybe you won't, but I noticed that, you know, they speak their language among themselves, so I don't understand the word, you know, well, because they keep it as their own secret. They have their own habit, their own traditions, you know, uh, they are, uh, so they live in villages around the, the, the River Nile, you know, you see, they are beautiful houses, you know, colored beautiful houses. Most of them, they have domes, you know, it's a system there, you know, uh, to take the heat up, you know, to the roof, to the ceiling, you know, so it cools down the temperature down uh, below. Um, they, most of them, a lot of them, they are fishermen. They work in the lake, you know, or in the river Nile for fishing, you know, or they, uh, they, they work in their small industries, you know, like the beads, you know, or like extracting the essences of the flowers, you know. Uh, and some few of them, they work in the, in the city, you know, so they cross to the, to the East Bank where most of the city is uh, every morning to work there like teacher or, or any kind of jobs they have. Uh, we get the chance in, uh, in that afternoon uh, to cross uh, to the Western Bank to, to have a walk through the Nubian uh, village. Also, we get the chance to have tea. Uh, a welcome drink, like a welcome drink, you know, in one of uh, the houses there. We walk through the, the streets, mostly pedestrian area, you know, peaceful to walk around. Uh, we get the chance to visit the school as well and to see this uh, different culture. So that's why we travel, you know, to see different culture, you know, different people. Uh, the Nubian uh, village. Uh, the next day is totally uh, free. Except for one thing, you know, we usually do it in uh, the afternoon, which is uh, the sailing boat, the Feluka Rite. Feluka, it's an Arabic word or an Egyptian term for uh, the sailing boat, you know. Usually white sails, you know, we have in, uh, in Aswan, just relaxing. So this is a pic uh, from one of the trips of the travel department, you know, sitting and relaxing on the boat. No engine, you know, no, no, it's calm, you know, and smooth. We just depend on uh, the wind, which blow through the, uh, the sail, you know, and we enjoy the, the scenery uh, around the Feluca right. I have more pics for the uh, Feluca. Here we can see the sailing boat, the Felucas, with the white sails in uh, Aswan. Uh, the River Nile is very calm. It's never rough, you know, it's very calm and smooth, as you see in the picture here. 
that's more but you know and you enjoy the scenery i mean I, I, again you can see the contrast you know between the desert and the greenery you know you can see the desert especially on the, the western bank well in that morning i told you this day is free but there is an optional thing you can do in the morning you know before the feluca in the afternoon which is the excursion to this magnificent temple the magnificent temple of abu simbel at the southernmost spot uh, of Egypt. It's an early morning excursion, but we return by the lunchtime, by half 12 or by one o'clock. So you're not wasting the whole day. You know? And of course, in the afternoon, we catch up with the Feluca, the sailing uh, boat. Uh, this temple, which is excavated in the mountain, preceded by four seated statues of King Ramesses II, uh, who ruled Egypt in the 13th century before uh, Christ. Those four seated statues you can see at the facade the height of each statue is 20 meter 20 meters just to give you an idea about the size of this uh, temple it's one of the optional excursions we have in the list of the travel department this is so we can we, we can fill in your time you know even in the free days you know we have some, we still have more activities you know so you are uh, so you're, you you we can keep you busy you know all the time if you want of course so these are some scenes from the walls of the temple, you know, uh, the scenes are very clear on the walls of this uh, temple, for example, in the right side box here we can see the king in his military chariot on the left, we can see him in one of uh, the battles. And these uh, and these pics, of course, are taken from one of the previous tours, as you see on the left side. Abu Simbin uh, temple. Uh, the next morning is uh, again is uh, is free. I give you also free time. We give you the chance, you know, if you want to walk around the harbor in Aswan, you know, I give you the direction to walk on your own if you want, you know, to uh, the market area or if you want to go up the road, you know, to a historical hotel, uh, which is the old cataract hotel. If you'd like to have tea and coffee in uh, the terrace of Agatha Christie, the famous writer, where she wrote uh, the famous novel death on the night. Before we return to, uh, you have to return back to the boat before lunchtime because according to sailing schedule, we sail again at about one o'clock. And then we take the same pass on the opposite direction, going back to Luxor, but this time we'll be returning in three nights. So we come from Luxor to Aswan in four nights, but we return in three nights. How's that? Why is that? Uh, it depends on the speed of the cruise ship. The speed of the cruise ship coming from Luxor to Aswan uh, is about, it's between 16 and 18 kilometers per hour. Well, I can't remember how much is that in knots, you know, the experts might uh, tell that, you know, but on the return, we are faster. So the speed is between 20 and 22 kilometers per hour. The reason is, of course, because we're going with the flow. We're going with the current, you know, when we're going from south to north, because the River Nile is unlike most of the rivers around the world. The River Nile flows from the south to the north where it ends in the Mediterranean uh, Sea. Uh, so we'll take the same pass, you know, Aswan, Komombo, Etfu, and then until uh, we reach, this is another map, you can see Komombo, Etfu. We already visited those temples before we reach uh, Luxor. That's uh, a view from Komombo Temple from uh, the boat. I told you it's, it's very near the river, very near, you can even see it from the boat. We are still sailing until uh, we reach uh, Luxor. This time, what we'll visit in Luxor will be the Eastern Bank, where we have two great uh, temples, and most of the city is on the Eastern Bank. The first uh, temple we visit in the afternoon is Karnak Temple. This temple is preceded by an avenue of ram-headed sphinxes, and this temple is very special because it's the biggest temple, not only in Egypt, but it's the biggest temple in the entire world. Karnak Temple. Uh, it's famous by its uh, huge pillars. We can see a pic here on the right side of its pillars and its obelisks as well. This is one of the obelisks. This is the back of me with the flag in the picture there. Uh, after we visit Karnak Temple, we go perhaps about only two kilometers, 2.7 kilometers to visit the other temple, Luxor Temple. The interesting thing about this uh, temple, well, every every temple has something unique, you know, that you can't, they are different, you know, and of course they have different stories, you know, I will tell you about when you are here. 
but the special thing you will notice about the visit of this uh, temple will be uh, that uh, the, the time of the day we visit, we get to see it by the sunset. So we get to see it by the daylight and also by the sunset and at nighttime when it's lit. So it's a chance to see an Egyptian temple lit uh, at night, which will be magnificent. Or pecs, you know, just to give you an example about the size here as well, the height of each statue you see here on either picture is 16 meters, one six. So this is one of the halls, the courtyards of uh, the temple. You can see the elegant columns, you know. This was exactly at the time of the sunset. We already started the lights. The lights were on in uh, the temple, but you can still see the daylight. So the photographers, if we have photographers on the tour, they will appreciate this uh, moment of the day to take photos in this uh, temple, Luxor Temple. All right, okay, we return to the boat. This is our last night on the boat, the seventh night. It's uh, the night of the settling the bills. Well, of course it was full board accommodation, but the drinks were extra. So we'll just uh, settle the bills of uh, the drinks and then the next morning, we'll take the coach to start a new adventure, to visit a different city, another site in Egypt, which will be Horgad. As you see in the map here, we are in Luxor. We'll cross the Eastern Desert toward the Red Sea, one of the most famous resorts we have here on the Red Sea, the city of Horgada. So it will be a chance of relaxation after visiting all these temples, all of that uh, history will start uh, to relax in one of the nicest spots in uh, Horgana, in one of the best hotels. As you can see the pictures, it's located immediately on uh, the sea, on the beach. It has its uh, private uh, beach. You can have your breakfast in the morning in this lovely terrace, for example. And this is another view. You know, most of the rooms there are sea view. And this is another view as well for the pool and uh, the Red Sea in front of it. One of the reasons of calling the Red Sea the Red Sea is because the color of the sand, it's a little bit reddish. And this is the lobby of the hotel. Uh, this is the dining uh, room. And this is of course the bar of uh, the hotel. So it has this bar and I think it has a bar as well by, as far as I remember, uh, by the sea area. Uh, in Hargada, we have like uh, two full days, you know, of free time. So you can just relax in the hotel or you can go have a walk outside. Of course, I will show you the directions when we are there, if you'd like to do some activities, of course, we have a list, you know, of activities we can suggest for you. In Horgada, basically, two kinds of uh, activities we can do. Uh, it's either the water or the desert. That simple. So, of course, Horgada is famous by the underwater life, the marine life. The, well, divers, they come from all over the world just to enjoy the dives in uh, the Red Sea, you know, to see the color. Uh, of the coral, uh, corals, reefs, and uh, the fish, of course, you know. So we have two ways to see that under the water. One way without wetting your feet, you know, which is by uh, the semi, what we call the semi submarine. We have a full submarine as well, and the semi submarine. And it's both of them, they are like only two hours trip. So it's not wasting your day. This is one of the options. Uh, if you'd like to have, uh, a nice swim with the fish. We have another longer excursion. It's uh, snorkeling. And this is a day uh, almost, well, a full day. It's from eight o'clock in the morning until half four in the afternoon when you return to your uh, hotel. Uh, we cruise the Red Sea by a boat uh, toward an island, a beautiful island surrounded by corals and reefs, you know, and beautiful colorful fish. And you don't have to be a professional swimmer to do the snorkeling. As you can see, it's very shallow. You can see this, uh, how not deep is the water. It's very shallow, you know, you can just walk in, you know, and you just have to mind your steps that you wouldn't break corals, you know, underneath, you know, and you just put the mask in the water and you see these uh, beautiful uh, fish. It's a snorkeling uh, trip. 
Well, the other part you can do in Horgada is as a desert, we have um, a very interesting, this is one of my favorites, you know, it's a super safari trip, you know, in the, the desert. And again, it's not an early start in the morning, you know, so you can relax in the morning, you can go to the beach, you can go to the pool. And by 12 o'clock, by midday, we collect you from the hotel to start this uh, uh, safari excursion. Uh, and it's a combination of many activities. Like, uh, for example, we have the Jeep. We have the quad bikes, which we see here in the picture. We have, we get the chance also to drive a spider car. I will also, I have a video for that. I will show it to you in a minute. Uh, until uh, we reach a Bedouin camp, we see the primitive life over there. We get to climb mountain, you know. Uh, it's uh, also, it's, it's good for the people who would like to enjoy the relaxation, you know. And we watch the sunset over there. And we even we get a meal in the Bedouin village and then we return back to the hotel about half six or seven o'clock in the evening. And also you can still have the dinner again in the hotel as well, <laughs> another dinner, you know. We'll be staying by the way in the hotel in Horgada. Usually we stay for half board basis, breakfast and, uh, and uh, dinner. Uh, so this is a short video now. I will play to you now. It's about two minutes, you know, just about, uh, and it's a silent video, you know, it has no, voice as much as I remember, uh, except for the, uh, the spider cars. Enjoy. That's the marina of Forgata. And that's the promenade area. Okay, uh, that's that's it. And then we have one more night in the hotel, and then uh, later it's uh, the final departure. We uh, we depart from uh, Horgada International uh, Airport uh, to go back home. Uh, 